Hey guys, Helping Hands here, bringing you the first of a series of bootcamp videos. This is for new players, and even some veterans might take away some tips from this. But this first video is gonna be on the mechanics of Company Heroes. So we're talking about like what, you know, what's the resources in Company Heroes? Why do you retreat? Why is veteran so important? Things like that, we talk about that, and um, you will be demonstrating it with the Soviet faction. Hope you enjoy. There we go, right. So here we have our, you know, spawn into to a map, this is called Lungraskaya. And you start off with your first core unit with the Soviets here, which is the combat engineers. So first things first, you've got three different types of resources. You've got your manpower, your munitions, and your fuel. The manpower is your core resource, which allows you to call in more units. So you can see here, this combat engineer squad costs 170 manpower. This conscript is 240. Also note the pop cap, population cap, which is this number here. So this, this unit takes up seven population cap. You can have a maximum number up to 100 of that population cap. Okay, munitions on the hand, uh, you use munitions to upgrade squads, like I can upgrade this squad with a flamethrower once I get 60 munitions, or a minesweeper. Um, or I can lay demo charges with, with, with 65 munitions. So all of this stuff act, adds, um, you know, allows your squads to get better, or you can use this to do off-map artillery strikes and, and, and the like, or lay mines and that kind of thing. And then you need fuel, and obviously fuel is required to bring on armoured vehicles, like your, your tanks and your, your mobile artillery units, that kind of thing. Um, there's also one more other resource in Company Heroes 2, uh, which is the VPs right at the top of, the, top of our screen here. So both players or both uh, or both teams start with 500 VPs each. And the way you need to, you know, you can there's two ways of winning um, Company Heroes 2. Either destroy your opponent's base, which is over here on this map, or you drain their VPs all the way down to zero. So these are the VPs. If you can I can press this button here, which is called the tactical map, which is a very cool little feature. It allows you to get a good overview of the whole battlefield. And you can see these three star points are the VPs. Now... If you've got one VP and your opponent's got one VP and one's neutralized, neither side will tick down. But it's obviously, you know, if you, whoever side has a majority, their opponents will start ticking down, as I will now indicate. So if I get bring, maybe, uh, I've got a cheat mod open here so I can just quickly spawn in units. So we'll just capture these two these two points. So here's, you know, when you're capturing a point, you need to keep a squad inside the VP. And then this, this circle will go all the way around to um, you know, obviously once it's gone all the way around, it will then become yours and it will turn in different colours. So if you look over here, you'll see our flag will fly on top of it, it will look, have a blue outline, and that is now ours. And we can see on the mini map, the bottom left hand side, and also on the tactical map, that we now own these points. And now you'll also notice at the top right hand side here, we can see that our opponent's VP count is slowly ticking down. And when that reaches zero, we win the game, okay? So if I was to, for instance, make this opponent way. VP, selection owner enemy, it should be red. And now, because Oh, both sides have one VP each and one is neutral. Neither side's VP count will be ticking down, okay? Right, so there's three different resource points on the map. You've got your standard um, strategic point, which is five munitions and three fuel, as you can see here from the, from the, from the uh, tactical map here. It doesn't actually say on, on the actual points themselves unless you go onto the tactical map, okay? So we're capturing these points. You always want to try and capture as many points as possible and prioritize munitions points and fuel points because they'll be giving you more resources than the standard point. A standard point, once you've capped it, I will just quickly show you. So now we're just going to automatically cap this point with the cheat mod. Uh, selection owner me. You can also upgrade the point to provide more resources. So I could upgrade this point, for instance, and give myself either more munitions or more fuel. Just going to do speed ups here so I can instantly build this for you guys so you can show what I'm doing. Um, game speed ups, instant production, construction. So here we go, so I'm going to build this munitions cache, and you see, see this plus 5? It will now turn into plus 10. There you go, plus 10. And if I came over to this point, section owner me, and I can upgrade this point to the fuel point, to go double the fuel to plus 6. Like so. And that way, you can spend like your excess manpower in the later stages of the game, uh, when you have too much of it in your map, in your pap, your population cap, so you can't build any more units, you can still spend the map, your resources uh, of your manpower to invest in more munitions or more fuel. Okay. Yes, comrade. But as Banora says in the chat, for the love of God, do not build one-minute caches into the game. Why do you not want to do that? Because you're spending, you know, lo your your most your valuable manpower at the start of the game should be spent in investing in infantry and units. You only want to build caches late into the game once you have full map, you know, uh, once you have you know, like your population capped or you're trying to get, you know, you ha have some resources spare to invest into 
a um, a fuel. Normally, people will invest into a fuel cache just so they can get a faster uh, tank out. Okay. Some people get triggered by the way I pronounce cache. I, some people call it cache. But I like saying cache because I know I know I know a lot of people um, get triggered by it, so that's why I pronounce it like that. Because uh, someone on YouTube got really triggered over that anyway. But yeah, so um, so as with, as the Soviets, you could decide to build um, you know tier one. Tier 2, or just go pure conscripts at the start of the game. So, you know, the Soviet faction has quite a nice variety of openings that you can do. We'll get on to build orders and the Soviet faction itself later on. But I want to go over some, some core, some, some other core features. So, we have a conscript squad here, and it's currently hasn't got any veterancy on it, right? And the point, and you always want to try and keep your squads alive because through fighting, they will level up and get unlock more abilities and become more accurate and and be able to receive more damage basically so i mean we have a normal conscript here and i will just show you the differences so we're going to make this this conscript um make it veteran c3 right and then we'll have a one we'll have a brand new conscript over here okay and we'll be fighting i don't know well let's fight um i'll put these guys here and I'll put down some... Let's put just some Volks Grenadiers, okay? Okay. And we'll do the same thing over here. Volks Grenadiers, okay? So this one's Veteran C3, and this is the Vanilla Veteran C, okay? So now, watch what happens in these fights then. So I'm going to make this Selection uh, Owner Enemy. Selection Owner Enemy. And you'll see through these fights. This is kind of an even fight or I'm losing this fight, but over here... Because this conscript squad is veteran C3, we're absolutely demolishing this this Volk squad. Okay, see that? Look how easily and how quickly we're, we're killing that squad compared to over here. It's quite it's quite an even fight, and we're actually losing that engagement. Okay, so that's why veteran C is so important on trying to keep your squads alive. Because you know later on into the fight, later on to the game, um, you know you, you'll need that veteran C to stay alive. See, we lost that engagement there, and conscripts are normally the squads that you want. They're they're good squads at fighting at close range, right? So. Uh, and then we actually lost that engagement over there, for instance, okay? So always want to try and keep your squads alive. If your squad gets low, what you need to do is learn to press the R button. So we're going to press R now, which is the retreat button. And we treat the squad back to base if you want to save it. And squads that are retreating back to your base will take a lot less damage and they'll have more chance to survive the, uh, the fight, okay? So they're running all the way back to base, like here. Now, if you wanted to heal your squad, you can reinforce it back to full strength by spending manpower and pressing the F key. There you go. And now they reinforce. Obviously, reinforcing won't happen instantly. It will take some time because I've got the speed ups at the moment. But you get the idea. You press it, press F to reinforce. But we also notice here that this squad is still not fully healed, healed up to its maximum potential, right? Because each me each each member of this squad can take a certain amount of damage before they die. Now, if we want to heal them fully, we have to invest in medics so we can get a field infirmary up. And in a second, you'll see some medics spawn out from, from, the, from the base, and they'll come over, and then they'll heal your squad. And then you'll get this big medic symbol above, above their heads, and you can see that their, their health at the bottom here is slowly recovering back to its, um, its maximum capacity. And you always want to try and make sure you, you get your squads back um, to base and heal them up and, and go again. You never want to be losing squads, okay? Show us the medics that these lovely ladies... I love crouching, you know. I don't know why they're always like hunched over, but the medic medic ladies are like little, little gnomes, little goblins. Uh, but, they, but there they are over there. Okay. So let's bring out some uh, some other things. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about supporters. So these are core infantry units, right? So this is a uh, sorry, an en a combat engineer. So this squad can obviously build mines. Uh, it can lay barbed wire. Barbed wire, barbed wire. So I'm also just going to build some uh, some cover here, for instance. Uh, where should we build cover? Let's come over here, actually. Or... Yeah, let's just come here. Right. So we want to build cover. Like, if we're capturing a point, like, you always want to be trying to build, like, make, take advantage of the squad that's just not doing anything. Because this squad would just be sitting here being idle otherwise, okay? So building cover makes, you know, makes it more likely that you can be able to defend this location against enemy. Now, what is cover? There's three types of cover in Company Heroes. There's green cover. There's light cover, which is uh, so green cover is represented by a, a green shield. A yellow shield re represents um, medium medium cover. Thank you very much to one eight zero for the quick prime sub there, dude. Thank you very much. 
And there's negative. Well, there, well, it's actually four types of cover. There's negative. There's there's no cover, like so. Like these and these dots indicate is, uh, where you're going to put your squad, and you can see where the cover is. And then there's there's negative cover, which is red cover, and that's normally on roads. But this map does not have any red cover because it's all like a dirt kind of dirt roads. But there's uh, uh, negative cover is is indicated by a red shield. Okay. So squads that are in cover will be a lot harder to hit. Okay. However, the one thing that's the, 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 um, hurts units in cover is flame, is, is incendiary damage or flamethrower damage, like this. So if I was up against an enemy that was in, like, um, behind this cover here or in a house, houses also um, give the squads green cover, okay, um, then flamethrower damage or incendiary grenades will do a lot more damage than, than if they were out of cover, for instance, okay? Generally because the squad is, um, because that's one of the mechanics, and also because the squad is bunched up, they're a lot tighter, so they, they're, they're more likely to take, to take damage, right? Because you can see the squad's quite tight there, and I can spread them out like so. And they can be, uh, they can be, you know, they're more open. So actually, get a squad to face a certain direction. I right-click and drag. So I get them to, to look a certain way. I could get them to go this way, go on the cover, and look behind themselves if I want them to. But you know, the enemy's to the south, so we want to, you know, we want to be looking that way. Now we can also get deny cover as well. So we built this cover, but we don't want our opponent to use it because our opponent could use that cover as well. And what we can do is we can build some barbed wire here, like so. And that stops our opponents from using this this this, this cover. We will have it up. We are See, now I can't gain that, that cover because in Company Heroes 2, cover is directional as well. I, I want to point out. So an enemy, if an enemy came round the side here and shot me from from this side, basically it would it would be treated as if I was not in cover at all, right? So because because cover is directional. So if it, if I had an opponent that came around and reflected from this side, I'd want to get onto this opposite side of this tractor, for instance, and then I'd be in better position. Okay. Right. Let's talk about houses. So now we are in a house. Let me know, chat, if I'm talking too, too quickly. Um, so I will slow down if you guys think I am. We'll talk about vaulting in a minute. But yeah, chat, if you, got any, if you guys got any uh, things I'm forgetting about, remind me. So houses, uh, like I say, have provide green cover. You can see this squad's got a green shield on it. And you can put uh, up to a maximum of two squads in one house. But you don't normally want two, squ two squads in a house because um, a house only provides a certain number of win windows, right? So this side, side of the house has four windows. This one has three. And then this side's got three, and that side's only got two. So, oh, I took a screenshot there for some reason. Um, and it's worth—it's always worth noting this because if you're if you are trying to engage this house, the best side to engage this house from would be from this side because this side of the house only has two two windows, right? So only two of those men out of the six that are inside could actually shoot me, right? If I shot from anywhere else, I would have a lot more firing at me, right? So that's what you want to do. And normally I would want to assault this position with a flamethrower as well, and I could clean clean the squad out. Okay, right. Um, we'll talk about vaulting now. So we've got fences here or stone walls here with, with these stone walls and fences. If you wanted to jump or even cover, let's just build another set of cover. So if I wanted to jump over this, this fence, I could just right click on the fence itself and my squad will jump over it. Same thing with the, with, with the cover here. If I wanted to let's say enemy came from behind me, oh, jump back over on this side. Now, I mean, now, now my cover is protecting me from an enemy that might be over here. Okay. If you missed the start, guys, I will be uploading this to my YouTube channel. And I will answer any questions you may have throughout the stream as well. Um, okay, so we've talked about cover. Oh, let's talk about suppression and support units now. Okay, so right. So we got some support. So this is so, so tier one gives you like your core units, like a penal battalion, a sniper. Um, so a sniper, a maxim, a mortar, and a zis gun. We'll bring these three, un these four units out. Quickly go through what these do. What they do. Actually, let's just spawn one in over here. Right. So all these four units are considered support units, okay? The Ziz gun is primarily used to counter armor. And you can see here, this line, this uh, this cone of arc here, it gives us, gives us its range and and any unit, any, any vehicle that comes into this, this arc will get shot at. However, there's line of sight. Let's talk about line of sight, actually, and fog of, and fog of war. So we're going to come over here with this squad, this, this Ziz gun. Right, so Crew, we're moving. units in Company Heroes 2 can't see past sh uh, sight blockers such as hedgerows and buildings and stuff, right? If I, support, if I had this uh, conscript squad over here, I'm unable to see past this area over here, okay? Because, you know, it, it just doesn't make, you know, no, it's re realistically in real life they wouldn't be able to see past there. So this could actually, you know, you could set up good ambushes and stuff like that, basically, by, by utilizing this, okay? So, and also... 
this is you see this code of arc here so i could actually use attack ground with the button e so if i knew there was a there was a, there was a bunker here or a tank here i could use attack ground with my zis gun to actually shoot through hedgerows to hit that that um that enemy that enemy unit or vehicle that, that's lying over there okay so you always want to try and use attack ground if you can't actually see your opponent um automatically with you know if, it, if it's been blocked by line of sight now you can't shoot through a building if it's still standing but you can still da i can still damage that building from this side okay so if i wanted to set up this cone of arc you hold right click and you drag where you want it facing so let's face it down right down the center there and i've also got it on prioritize vehicles uh, so just what you want to do if i press d it will now just shoot infantry as well which you don't want it doing because it's a zis gun it's 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 prior it's, it's it will only be effective against uh, vehicles with its, with its default fire mode um so then you want to if you press d yes. it will all, only then fire at vehicles even if enemy infantry come into fire but if an enemy vehicle infantry squad was here let's just spawn in a so this is only specific to this unit so this is something i want to talk about with um what do you moving to capture okay so we know there's a um a grenadier here basically Okay, so each unit has kind of specific abilities. And this is the only anti-tank gun out of all the other factions that can do this ability, which can do a light artillery barrage. So if you, if you know an enemy location, I can press Z, and then I let... So then it brings up this kind of area where in, inside that circle was where the rounds will likely land. And I'm going to put, put it directly on top of that Grenadier squad, like so. And then it'll start lobbing uh, rounds onto that, and that'll be effective against infantry, okay? You can see it's doing quite a lot of damage there and it wipes the entire squad. So it's quite accurate with, with, with its rounds. And you can see it's firing because it's got that kind of that mortar little round on top of it, okay? And then, but you had to spend munitions to, to achieve that ability, okay? So that was this gun. So a sniper is a unit that has this big circle circumference around it, which means that's its, that's its uh, max, this gives it a max range. And this unit is basically, what you want to do with it is just keep using attack moves, you press Q, you shoot an enemy unit and then you backpedal with it and you just keep picking enemy unit enemy models off one at a time you do not want this unit in close combat if it gets into close combat it will die immediately it's a, it's a very fragile unit but it's very good at bleeding your opponent right so you can do damage to your opponent but not receive any damage yourself with this unit okay so there's a way a way to slowly win, grind and win a war like that so now we also have a maxim which i'll now show you so a machine gun so machine gun, lot, every faction has a machine gun so if you talk about the Americans, they've got the 50 cal, the Germans have got the MG34 and the MG42. Uh, Soviets got the Maxim or the Dishka, and then the British have the Vickers. Now, again, the same thing here, they have the, the same kind of code of arc, and that's where enemy units come in and, and the machine gun will shoot them. But if an enemy squad came around like here, this way around, and flanked the squad, the MG would not be able to retaliate because it's not it's not set up that way. But if I wanted, I could then do the same thing with this gun, click and right click and look again, the direction that the flank is coming from, then I can deal with that incoming flank, okay? Machine ready. Right, let's talk about suppression. Let's get spawn in a bulk squad here. Right, selection, owner, enemy. Right, so this Maxim is now going to open up onto this uh, bulk squad. Now, this bulk squad is, with this little exclamation mark triangle symbol, means it is suppressed. Suppressed squads basically are useless. They can't do anything in terms of fighting. Um, and now that, now that the squad is pinned, it, all you can do with that squad now is retreat it, okay? So that's why machine guns are very good because you can, you know, utilize superior firepower to make the squad, um, you know, render them useless basically, okay? Now, we've also got a mortar here and you can see why a mortar is very good here because, well, because the squad is, is immobile and not moving at all, the mortar is very good to just pound the enemy down and kill them. And also, mortars are very good against killing support weapons and machine guns that are inside buildings and stuff, okay? Now, the mortar, you want to, see, the mortar will automatically fire at anything in its range. Thank you, Brickman, for 40 months new. Cheers, mate, for the support. Um, and you can press Z here, and then you can start bombarding an enemy position with the mortar. The mortar, once it gets, um, once it has munitions, it can drop a flare in the sky as well to give yourself vision, which can be very good to give yourself an idea where you want to bombard next, or where you want to, you know, to set up for for, the, for your next attack. So if you, we saw like an enemy machine gun, for instance, here pointing this way, we would know we need to go around to this side of the map, come around and flank around this side to try and deal with that machine gun, or we'd get the mortar to bombard it. Okay. So there's your three kind of main core support units. You've got your anti-tank gun, your machine gun, and your mortar. They're kind of your three core ones. And then the, the sniper is like the, the extra kind of support unit there. That's it. So this is kind of like your core infantry there. Okay, let's get onto some vehicles. So we'll just quickly build another engineer. We'll build our next 
uh, set of tech. Build tier four. Oh yeah, we could also talk about hold fire. So snipers and ziz guns can hold fire if you wanted to. So you can hold fire. Let's say, let's say an enemy got really close to your sniper and you didn't want to fire because you knew you would get killed. Um, then you can, your sniper can go hold fire. Also, some certain units like snipers can go camouflage and that makes them invisible. Certain units can detect, detect units while uh, while in camouflage, like scout cars um, or, or pioneers, that kind of thing. Um, you know, certain units have bigger detection radius than others. Now, like I say, units in camouflage. They can't be spotted unless they get, you know, enemy unit gets close to them. Um, Sniper on the move. And they also take a while. Once they, they, they can walk from out of, out of cover. There's not in any cover now, but as long as you get back into cover within the time limit, because I think it's like one, two, three, four. I think it's about yeah, about four seconds before the sniper becomes uncloaked if you stay out of cover for for a long time. But you can, for instance, get your sniper once he's camouflaged to keep hopping from cover to cover like so. That is what you want. I think I may just make it there. There you go. See ya. And then I can get creeping down the line to possibly get a counter sniper on my opponent. But always making sure my car, my sniper is, is hugging cover on the way down. And you can get female, uh, female snipers with the Russians. Um, yeah, I think that's the only kind of female unit you can actually get in the game. Apart from the Soviet medics at the base there. Right, so we built tier 3 and tier 4. Oh yeah, another thing. Yeah, units in, in cover as well won't get suppressed as much. Uh, so if you, I was in light cover, it would take a little bit longer for me to get suppressed than if I was out in the open. And if I was in green cover, it's very hard for me to get suppressed. However, again, if, if I was to shoot my machine gun from here and I had a, you know, an enemy squad here, I'd be able to suppress it because, again, cover is directional. Right, so we've got tier 3 and tier 4. So that's just, um, you know, so tier 3 is your, like, your, your mechanized core. You get yourself your reinforcement half tricks. So you can reinforce on the field. Your T-70, which is one of your core little light vehicles, which is very good against killing infantry. Then you've got your SG-76, which is kind of like a light armored tank destroyer thing then you've got your your katusha your, your t-34 and your su-85 that's your standard bog standard soviet army let's just bring out um so you basically same thing again light tank has arrived. t-34 is a female yeah actually that's true t-34 is a female voice actors right so you can do the same thing with um, with these, like like with the Ziz gun. You can again every vehicle that is that has a main gun, you can use an attack ground with it. If it's not an artillery unit, so we can all get these things attacking. So let's say you know we had an enemy unit who's hiding behind here. We didn't want to get too close. We could just use a T70 to shoot on the other side of this hedgerow to, to hit that enemy. When using the, the so again, what you want to do is press E, attack ground. And it will shoot roughly in that location. Again, these vehicles have prioritized vehicles, so if you want them to only prioritize a vehicle, you can do. Otherwise, it probably might shoot the near, nearest thing clo uh, closest to it. And this is this um, SG-76 also can do another light artillery barrage, very similar to what the, the Ziz gun can do. Right, the T-70 special ability is to they can capture uh, abilities. They can, sorry, they can capture sector, uh, um, yeah, sector points once they gain veteran C1, and they're in secure mode. In secure mode means they can see more, like so. You can see the, you can see the vision there that we get there. So when I pop it, so when I pop it on, yes, see that much. Let's give some veterancy now to this unit. Combat veterancy one, two, three. There you go. The veterancy three gives it a big sight bonus, and that's great for you know providing LOS. Now we've got in secure mode. It's also capturing that sector point. Okay. There you go. So we cap. And now I've disabled that ability. It can now shoot, but it doesn't see as far, right? Okay, so tanks can't cap. No, some tanks can cap. Um, generally, it's only Soviet ones. So it's the it's the T thirty four scan as well. Let's just call on a quick T thirty four. Wait, I'm pop capped. I got a few ones. I can just give me some resources. Infinite all resource types. There we go. Right, we'll spawn in a T thirty four. So your T-3476 can also cap territory, um, but you've got to shift it in so you, you need to get version C1 again. So it's just these two un general units that can cap sectors um, as vehicles. But you also, if you've got like an M3 with a unit inside, you, an M3 on its own can't cap, cap the sector, but when, you, but when you garrison a squad inside it, then that, uh, that vehicle then can um, capture a point, and that goes for any faction. So you've got your Germans with their half tracks; they can cap points if, they, if you've got infantry inside, um, you know that kind of thing. Okay. 
And then you've got yeah, then you've got commander abilities, which are very specific, which allow you to cap sectors as well. But we'll get onto commanders in a second. Moving. Right. But yeah, I see what people in chat are saying. You can cap with USF cruisers. These are all very specific things, but I'm just saying as standard, right? The, the vehicles themselves can't capture points. And thank you very much for the follows, guys. Hope you're enjoying this um, this little boot camp session. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, let me just double check and go through some of the, um, the tips of the week that I've done in the past and see what we can go over. Um... Oh, let's talk about queuing orders. So next next mechanic is queuing orders. So if you wanted to get a squad to do multiple things, what you need to do is hold down the shift key on your keyboard. So let's get this pioneer, this engineer, sorry, to construct wire here, right? And also then construct wire here. I'm just shift clicking, let go, and then wire here, and then then lay a mine on this side of the point. Okay. Oh, but oh, this is something you got to watch out for as well. Don't wire yourself in, because if you wire yourself in like that, the squad gets stuck, and then they then they get they get in trouble. So I could just delete that. But always try and wire the point from this side. You can from, from the opposite side so you don't get yourself trapped. I don't know why, but I have a really bad habit of always doing that regardless of what, you know, what I'm doing. Norm why doesn't normally get built this quickly? There you go, we're going to lay a mine there as well, like so. So there we go. And that was all three in shift commands. And I can also get squads to, like, shift cap territory points. So I can get this squad, for instance, to go on my tactical map and also capture, for instance, here. Then there, then there. So they'll cap from that point to that point to that point. Or I can go on the mini-map and do it as well. Shift click. I'm, 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 you see bottom left hand side of, my, of the screen here, I can shift click these points as well. And I can get them to cap the points that way as well. So you don't have to go onto the tactical map if you didn't want to. Okay? Right, so that was capping. Um, the shift orders. Oh, you can also use shift orders for other things as well. So let's say, uh, one thing I like to do is, let's say you've got, um, let's say you've got slot items no let's give myself actually uh, oh hello machine gun ready selection squad members kill uh -huh. okay so we just killed those squad members right all right let's bring back uh let's uh quickly make a new engineer Play him, play engineer. Okay, so let's talk about recruiting stuff now. Um, so we've got engineer, right? Right, it says two here. It, says it takes a minimum of two men to recruit it, but you don't want to recruit with two men, especially on, like, on, on an engineer. Because if you, if I recruit on an engineer, let's see if I can copy this really quick. Selection, um, clipboard, copy, paste, paste. Okay, so let me just... Um, engineer standing by. Squad members kill one, two. So if I was to recruit this Maxim with this squad, I would lose this squad, right? That squad now becomes a Maxim crew. Now you don't want to do that. You do not want to like take squads and grab other other like uh, weapon crews and lose the original squad because you can avoid doing that if the squad was was um, at four men. There were Soviets. Let's, let's, let's again. So we had let's have a four man uh, engineer uh, engineer squad. We're going to capture this Maxim. Oh, it's been buggy. Let me try and make a new maximum one second. Soviets. We're going on the move. Let's just decrew this on. Sorry guys, two seconds. Okay, so yeah. So if we re recruit, you know, this this is gun for instance. Three of those men go on to this gun, and I still keep the original squad, right? Now I can retreat that squad and press R. And it goes all the, back, all the way back to base. But I can use shift, what we learned from shift cap, we can do the same thing, apply the same thing here. If I was to again delete the models of this, so uh, squad members kill one, two, like so. Also, it's worth noting with Ziz guns, once they go down to, um, uh, was it? Yeah, two men. One, the last guy runs off like off the field and, and uh, yeah, once it goes down to one man, the, the last guy goes off the field and, and then doesn't come back. So that's a good point to add with, with anti-tank guns. Uh, right, so let's just get the... Um, so let's use a combat, a, a conscript squad this time. So let's say we wanted to grab this and retreat the squad straight away. But we'll do it with an engineer squad because the engineer squad is a bit more um, risky because you, know, you normally want to grab something with an engineer squad and retreat right away because that squad goes down to one man. 
and that means you know obviously one man left is very easy to get wiped. So you want to you want to go and grab this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click this, hold down shift, and then also so then also hold down shift and press the retreat button as well. So once as soon as that, that original squad has capped his gun, the man the last man from the engineer squad is going to run straight back to base. And, you know, that's a way to make sure that squad definitely gets back out there alive. Okay? Now, normally, you know, doing that on the front line with an engineer squad is quite risky. You probably want to do it with a conscript squad, because a conscript squad, when they cap capture a, uh, a Ziz gun, again, will only take three men off the squad, as I will now indicate. Uh, one second selection. Squad members, kill. Like so, right? So then, again, shift cap, retreat, three men. So with this squad retreating, three men has got a lot more chance of survival getting back to base. So you normally want to like capture it with a conscript, okay? You know, or squad, or squad size bigger than four, okay? Get ready to move. But with Ostia, for instance, that, that, those faction, that faction normally has only maximum squad sizes of four themselves. So whenever they try and pick up a weapon on the ground, it's quite risky. But you always should try and steal weapons if you can. So if you manage to kill an enemy machine gun, and then you shift cap it with a squad with, with four or more men, you actually, you know, your, your, your enemy will lose a squad and you'll gain a squad, basically, by doing that. So it's a very effective way to um, get ahead in company here as to if you manage to um, steal your opponent's weapons and, 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 and that kind of thing like that. Okay? All right. Now let's talk about uh, commanders. So in company heroes, if you ever play company heroes 1, you'll know that the commanders are a thing. Um, but if you never played any company heroes game before, there are... Three commanders that you can choose from um, in the game itself when you're actually playing the game. In the main menu, you can go back outside in the main menu and you can choose uh, between maybe 10 to 15, 10 to 20 commanders, depending on what faction you, you're, 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 you've selected, um, to go into the game with. But you can only ever choose one of those commanders when you're actually playing. Now, I generally recommend having a nice variety of commanders so that you can, you know, you can adapt to any situation. So, for instance, here we have three commanders here. These are the, these are the three portraits. So, we have Guard Mortar Tactics. So, this commander gives herself better T-34s, a Guard Squad, which is a, a squad that's good against infantry and it's good against vehicles, um, a Mortar Squad that's a better version of the standard Mortar. You've got Vehicle Crew Repair, which can allow you to repair your tanks, and you've got Mark Vehicle Target, which allows you to get more penetration damage against enemy vehicles. Then you've got another commander here, which is kind of like a defensive commander. You've got, like, your, your, your Dishka, another Mortar, a, very, a, a smaller anti-tank gun that you can only get with this commander. Um, and it's a call-on unit, so you haven't, you haven't got to build it from your, from your tech structure. And you can get anti-tech overwatch, which is good in late game to bombard enemy tanks if they come into a certain area. Then we've got urban defense tactics. And this commander allows you to call on, like, for instance, the late game K KV-2, which is a very good tank against killing infantry. Um, you know, so each if you always want to choose a commander. Thank you very much, JT Deal, for the sub. Cheers, buddy. So, for instance, let's just let's for sake. So we're gonna so we so we could choose any one of these commanders, and for instance, we're gonna choose this commander. But, but but pay attention to the to the numbers below the portraits of each icon. So we can call it, once we get to two CPs, we can call it on guards. These are command points, which is over here. So this could be maybe considered as the fifth resource. Again, the first one being manpower, second munitions, third fuel, fourth VPs, and fi and finally fifth um, the command points. So command you need the command points. Um, you need to unlock these better vehicles. So, for instance, the KV-2, for instance, requires 10 command points. And you unlock these by killing enemy units, building structures, and, and, and things like that. So if I was to build this, I don't know if it will just grant me some XP here because I think I've got maximum number of CPs. But there you go. You see that 210 XP? That XP feeds the command point uh, system, okay? But 32 is the maximum number we can have. But in Company Heroes, I think, you know, you, most factions only ever need to go up to about 10 CPs for certain things, okay? So we're going to call on, um, right, so we're, for instance, we'll call on uh, do urban defense tactics. So we'll have everything unlocked because we have the maximum number of CPs anyway. But we can see here we can make a forward headquarters on, for instance, this building. So we have to get a squad, like we can call on, um, for instance, we'll get uh, so we're infantry, combat engineer. So we can get a combat engineer. Once we've got the combat engineer inside the house, we can then click on this ability and then pop it on that this house. And then, hey, it's now a forward headquarters. And now units can now reinforce around this headquarters. Uh, and uh, get healed by the medics. Also, you can pop on this ability, Valley Defenses, Not one step which backwards. gives the squad more um, increasing its defense and offensive capabilities, so it allows them to hopefully defend this. But if this building falls uh, falls down and gets destroyed, then you will lose uh, that ability, that, you know, that, um, 
the headquarters, and you cannot repair it, by the way. Any, any, these, all these static structures, once they all get destroyed, all these houses, you cannot rebuild them, okay? Unlike your base. If you lose the, one of these buildings in your base, you can repair them, but or rebuild it. Um, but this, you can't. So this is kind of like an early game thing. And you, so you only really want to choose this ability on certain maps where you have stone structures. So wooden structures are a lot, easy, a lot easier to destroy uh, compared to stone structures, okay? So we can call on other units, like we can call on this Atlantic tank gun, some shock troopers as well, as we'll see here. Let's just delete these guys for a second. So here we have some shock troopers and the little anti-tank guns. This little anti-tank gun is a cool-on unit, so that's 240 manpower. It's worse against killing vehicles compared to its bigger brother, the Ziz gun. But it's still a nice little unit to call onto the field. For instance, let's say if you hadn't built tier 2. If you'd gone into like a tier 1 build and you um, wanted to call on, uh, you know, you didn't have any arm, uh, any way to kill an enemy vehicle, you might want to call on this to help you out. Uh, then you've got shock troopers. So this is a, like an elite infantry squad, which you can only call in via com a commander choice. Um, they are incredibly good at close combat uh, uh, fighting, um, CQC. They have PPSH guns. They look like bosses and they absolutely wreck face. They can lob grenades. Uh, they can lob a smoke grenade. Oh, and they can lob a, um, a standard grenade, which will do damage to infantry. So like for instance, let's say there's an enemy over here. You can lob the nade. There goes the grenade. Because we, these normally share a cooldown. Um, I'll actually put the cooldowns off for a second. Let's just show you guys. Uh, horses, speed ups. Where is it? All right. So if I love a nade, you see that this will share a cooldown. So it'll take 25 seconds for, for both of these things to to to, uh, to to be recharged, and they cost munitions, as you can see here. You want to use smoke grenades to stop it, like for instance, machine. Let's say a machine gun spotted you, and you want to lob a smoke grenade at machine gun so it stops firing at you. So that would be a good way to like break the line of sight so your squad doesn't get suppressed, kind of thing. Um, I also want to talk about. Let's just put the speed speed ups back on quickly. Just ge general grenades. It, it, uh, let's get molotovs as well. All those things there. So we've got this squad here, and we'll grab a infantry squad here. Conscript. Okay. So. Many squads in Company Heroes 2 can lob projectiles. And whenever a squad lobs a projectile, you need to make sure that you're paying attention to the animation of that squad if you're potentially receiving that projectile, right? So, for instance, with this grenade here, if you pay close attention to the lead model of this guy, he goes into a specific animation to lob that grenade. And if I press W, I can cancel that animation before he actually throws it. Uh, if, he, if I press W after he's throwing it, it'll still use the, the munitions up, right? But I can cancel. But you can see this guy specifically going into a crouch position to get ready to lob the nade. If you're paying it, you always pay attention to that because that will give you enough time to avoid that grenade if it's being lobbed at you, right? There you go. He lobs the nade out like that. And then you've got a little timer there to tell you how long it takes until it'll blow up. Now, conscripts, very similar. They can do molotovs, which is very good against enemies in buildings or in cover. And again, same thing here. Look at this guy. He's going crouched get closer here we'll just lob it here you can see him very specific animation i'm cancelling it before he does it because you might want to cancel the animation before they actually throw it because the enemy squad might have realized that you've moved and you can lob the molotov down and it will do a lot of damage to, to anyone that's sitting in there and you can actually damage yourself there. if i sit, sat in that molotov you can see i'm taking i'm taking damage from that so i'll take friendly fire from that if i'm not careful okay this is a lot to take in i know but we'll be going over all of this again throughout. We're doing four streams this week, uh, uh, two hours each, where I'm going to talk you guys through how to play Company Heroes 2. Uh, we're basically talking through the, the, the standard mechanics of the game at the moment. And uh, this, this, I will put this on my YouTube channel as well later on. Um, and uh, so if you miss anything here today, you can just go back on that and you can check those videos out. All right, let's call on this KV-2, the big boy. So these are your elite tanks. Again, they can only be called in by a commander. They cost a lot of resources and a lot of CPs and certain things they require. So, for instance, to have this onto the field, you can only have one of these onto the field at one, any one time, by the way. It's also worth noting that you need certain tech to call it in. So, yeah, you need 10 CPs, but you also need to build your tier 4 before you can call it in, right? The benefit of being able to call it in, it doesn't have a build time as well. So this thing is really good against infantry. I can like get it to bombard certain locations. So this is its attack ground range limit. So I can this is it's giving me a no entry symbol here, which means um, it can't shoot that far. But if I go but this way, I can shoot that way. And then you can see it fires immediately where I want to fire it over there. If I put it in its firing position mode, like so, it can fire a lot further. 
Might even be able to hit this Volk squad over here, actually, that's just chilling over here, yeah. Just taking a second. There you go. And we're going to take that guy out. So, but having this ability active means it's immobile, right? Just killed that bulk squad there. Okay, so that's um. And you also have it pri again. Prioritize vehicles. We can have it on hold fire, so it doesn't shoot. Maybe you want to save that round. Um, you know, want to make sure you save the round for some retreating squad rather than something else. Um, like so. Two seconds. I'm just gonna turn off my heater because it's burning my legs. Okay, let's go on now to let's see what else we got on our tips of the week here. Any of you guys want to um, go through my 20, I've got 23 tips of the week that are on YouTube, and they're all very helpful. They, um, some of them are old and maybe a little bit outdated in terms of like my pro being professional about it because I never got around to make we're making them, but they're still quite useful there. Definitely check them out if you're new. Uh, we're going to go through some of them today and do like new copies of them basically today. So we've gone through attack round, grenades, queuing orders. Um, right, we can go through kiting, listening through the fog of war, game awareness, capturing sectors we've done, using smoke, artillery, commanders, camouflaged, countering blobs. Right, let's go through... Go through kiting. Let's go, let's go through kiting next. That's an important one. So what is kiting? Scout car, driver, get us over there. Get a vehicle over here. Right. Halt. Right. Um, core units like your conscripts, your grenadiers, your Volks grenadiers, your riflemen, they all, they will all have an ability which is kind of like a snare. Apart from the infantry sections, because the sappers have the snare there for the Brits. And the snare is the uh, anti-tank gr grenade or Panzerfaust or you know, basically it's a projectile that damages vehicles, okay? Now against light vehicles, one, one grenade from this will damage its engine of the vehicle. Now a damaged engine makes the vehicle go a lot slower. Now you can see here, if I press C, which is, not, which is my hotkey on the bottom right hand side here, that, that gives me the, the, the distance I need to be, you know, my max range of, of my AT grenade. Now, if an enemy, cons let's just imagine uh, this was a German grenadier for instance. Actually, why not? Let's just bring one out. Delete you. Uh, delete. Lost it. Infantry. Grenadier. Right. So this Grenadier has a Panzerfaust, right? And his minimum range is basically the same as a conscript. So I would always want to make sure I'd be keeping away from this. I think I need to get tier one over here. Uh, Okay. Right, so here, again, and this is our Panzerfaust range, okay? You can see this is our range. So at kiting, I'd want to make sure that my vehicle, if I was being chased by this Grenadier, that I'm always keeping about this distance or a little bit more away from this Grenadier so I can I can never get fousted. If, if, if a light vehicle like the M3 gets fousted, it's very likely going to get killed because it's very, it becomes very very slow. And if it's off-road, in, standard infantry then can catch up to it and then finish it off. Or maybe, you know, because this doesn't take too long to recharge as well. So I'd be want to be chasing this and then I'd want to make sure that this vehicle was constantly backpedaling. So what I could do here... Let's just give an example. We are on the way. Scout car is on the move. You have ordered us. Guards, you need to wait. Okay. Walk, walk, walk. All we do is walk. Right, let's just do you. Relocating. So we'll see this enemy, see the grenade is coming closer to me, so I want to just be constantly backing away here, so I can be doing max range damage with my M3, and not be taking damage from the, from the Panzerfaust, okay, so just keep, keep backpedaling away like this, 
and if I do this, you know, I'm slowly killing off his men, whereas I can just jump out of this M3 and repair my damage and not lose any manpower, basically, by doing that, okay? This is the way I can just, like, keep, keep back backpedaling so that I can jump out of the vehicle, press Z to repair. So all cool infantry, uh, sorry, all cool uh, engineers can repair, so with the Soviets, it's Bomber Engineers, with Germans, it's the Pioneer or the Stern Pioneer, Brits, it's the Sapper Squad, and for Americans, it's the Rearshon. But Americans have a specific, specific mechanic where their vehicle crews can jump out and repair themselves, okay? So you always, that's what I'm talking about kiting. You always want to make sure you keep yourself a certain distance away from like unions, infantry units like Grenadiers. Now, let's say that was a Pioneer. A Pioneer, I wouldn't have to worry about running away from a Pioneer, right? Because a Pioneer doesn't have the ability to lob snares at me. So that's, a, that's, a very, that's why I say learning... Um, you know, the, the game's mechanics and the units themselves is half the battle because once you realize what units can damage you or what units pose a threat, then you know um, how to play against them, right? So if it's a pioneer, oh, I can get up really close and personal there with my M3 because the closer you get, like, this is the standard for every unit in the game, the closer you are to something, the more damage you do, apart from the universal Bren gun carrier, I believe. That's the only vehicle, I think, in the game that actually does more damage at range than compared to everything else. But generally, but generally speaking, most units do a lot more damage up close and personal, okay? So you want to make sure you've got your M3, you know, against the Pioneer, up nice, close person, and roasty, toasty them, right? Now, there's other units, for instance, the Volksgrenadier squad, in the start of a game, right? These, these guys don't have access to Faust at the start of the game. Now, why is that? Because they need their one of their buildings upgraded first. So, in the, in the, like, like the first three or four minutes, you could be really aggressive with the M3 and get up close to person with, the, with these Volksgrenadiers. But as soon as it's like four or five minutes, I wouldn't do that anymore because then their Faust would be available and then they could do damage. So, again, this is about learning learning the mechanics of the game, learning the timings, basically, and that kind of thing. So, like, a general, another thing, like, we, we, you know, as a general rule of thumb, you know, good players are generally around about seven, eight, nine minutes. That kind of mark is when you're ever, you know, you'll be up against the first, for instance, T70 or Panzer II. Um, then, then if you haven't got AT by that mark, then you're going to be behind and you're going to be in trouble because that that enemy vehicle is going to wreak havoc on you and you're going to lose the game. So you've got to make sure that you have like AT available around that time. Okay. Right. What else can we go through now? Let's just double check over here. Right, so we've gone through kiting. And you can also like uh, kite with not just vehicles, vehicles versus infantry, but you can kite with like tank destroyers, for instance. Let's say I had a Tiger tank versus an SU-85, okay? Let's say, or a Firefly. Um, but we're doing so here. So we get a um, tank here. SU-85. So this is a tank destroyer, right? This has got a lot long, this has got long range. However, it's very vulnerable to, to being flanked since it's got its main gun fixed. This is another thing you need to learn about. You know, certain vehicles like these, like this and the SU-76 um, can't turn, you know, can only shoot from, from its front. So if, if an enemy vehicle came around the side and started shooting it, the SU-85 SU is screwed basically, right? But even like a, a weaker vehicle, even like a Puma, which is very easily killed by an SU-85, could easily take this out if it managed to flank it. So that's why, you know, in Company Heroes 2, there's a lot, there's, it's kind of like, Soft core mechanics of the way you know to be able to come back into the game and, and be able to win if you use superior micro, for instance. Okay, now let's talk about kiting again with this vehicle. So we can pop on this ability here called Vocus Sight, which gives us a lot bigger vision here, but it does slow the vehicle down by by a considerable amount. Okay, become a lot slower than if we didn't ha um, than if we had had it off. Okay. But this does give, you know, we do gain more vision from this. So if I turn it off, we lose that vision, but it becomes a lot faster again, okay? All right, now if we had like an enemy tank, for instance, a OKW, um, let's bring a freaking King Tiger onto the field, for instance. No, not a Jagdtiger, because that can. So the Jagdtiger is a big tank destroyer, which can actually beat that unit over there, right? And that actually has more range than that issue at 85. But if for this sake, we'll get a normal Tiger. Selection, delete. So that's why, you know, a lot of times when I play Company Heroes 2 and I hear new people coming in, they always complain, oh, Axe is OP, man, why am I, you know, Axe has got the better armor and tanks. Now, generally, that is the case, because reality, right, they did have the better tanks, but obviously in the war, they had, you know, didn't make as many of them, that's why they lost the war, blah, 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 but let's not talk about that. Point is, yeah, the Axe armor is better, because it's more expensive, but it's generally slower, so that you can use that to your advantage. This King Tiger, yes, in a one-on-one -on -one fight against an SU-85, it would win, right? But the King Tiger is very slow compared to the SU-85. If I make this uh, this tank um, selection owner enemy, right? So we know there's an enemy King Tiger down here. So first of all, I would want to 
you know, you want to get a vision of it. And I can start shooting this issue at 85 from range. And this King Tiger cannot return fire because I outrange it, right? And I can just keep smashing it from range like this. And then also notice that some of the shells will will bounce. We are hitting the front front side of the, of the tank. In Company Heroes, vehicles have different types of armor. So you've got the rear armor and then your front armor, basically. And if we managed to hit him in the rear, we'd obviously we'd probably be penning nearly every shot. But here we can just constantly just ping away at this enemy tank from range and not take any damage ourselves. And if this tank decided to engage, push us, we could just, again, what, what we did with the infantry and the M3 earlier, we can just backpedal away and just keep papping away at him, you know? So that's the way how we can defeat enemy armor that might be technically superior to us by using, you know, like like, a, like for this advantage, you know, the advantage we have here is that we have the range, range advantage, okay? There we go. But you can see quite like nearly half the shells here are bouncing off the front line of this King Tiger because it is, um, it is, a, it is a King Tiger. It's got that big armor buff. But here, but as you can see, the more shells that we the, we bounce and, and, and penetrate this this, unit, this this tank, the more veterancy we're gaining with this tank. So every shot that penetrates, we see a big chunk of veterancy go up. So let's just we'll keep watching until this S-85 gets another penetration shot. There you go. Not veterancy one. There you go. And the, now it's got veterancy one, unlocks the tracking ability. So now, I back away with the tracking ability. I can track enemy infantry that might be on the fog of, you know, that I might not be able to see um, through the fog of war. It's like a special ability that certain vehicles get, so, you know. And that's again, you need to learn all, all, all the abilities certain units have in the game because they will, you know, give you certain advantages, okay? So if I was to come over here, let's just build an SU-75 over here. Hey. Yes, comrade. Uh, what am I doing? Dad, you got hold fire. Give me vision. Yeah. Um. Thanks. We'll make a T thirty four, right? Let's see thirty four. We're gonna reverse around here, and we're gonna shoot here, and it's a rear armor here. Now, T thirty four generally, when I try and shoot a king tiger from the front. I won't be I won't be penetrating, right? So I'm hitting in the front. And because I'm really close to him as well, the King Tiger can't do shit. Okay? I can I I can use my mobility and my um my speed to outmaneuver the King Tiger, right? Because of the turret is slow now. As a as as a the King Tiger player, you want to be reversing that King Tiger back and making sure that you know, if I let me I wanna try and see if I can replicate that fight. Uh, I kind of needed someone else to, to play with me to, to, to try and demonstrate it. But I'll make a King Tiger myself now. Um, oh, wait, not yet. I can do the wrong one. Selection. Own an enemy. Wait, no. Delete. Okay. So basically, let's say this T-34 was going to come and attack me and try and flank me here. Let's just do, let's move it this way. Selection, owner, enemy. So I can see he's trying to flank around me here, but I would want to do this. I would want to try and get my ticket and reverse it back, reversing R, and make sure my front llama is always focusing towards the enemy, right? I always make sure I, 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 I position my tank correctly. And I'll always, I would always generally win the engagement. So you see, I came around here, saw him coming around to try and flank me in the rear, and then I reversed back, make sure I always got my front armor facing my opponent, and then you've got a lot better chance of, of doing better in that engagement, okay? But that's a fate advantage. Surely the axe has longer range in real life. Yes, yes, this is a game after all, guys, right? You know. You know, the, I, I, you know, in real life, this would be able to shoot a few miles, right? And so would this. But this distance here is what? Not even that. It's a couple of... It's not even one mile. Yeah? But obviously, this is a game. But generally, you know, you, each, each unit will have certain advantages over the other. I mean, you know, the Axis this time, for instance, will have... Um, you know, let's call in an austere uh, elephant, for instance. The elephant. Now, the elephant... It's a tank destroyer, just like the SU-85, but it's a better version of it. Better version of tank destroyer. It does more damage, it's got more health, and can smack and, and do... Yeah, basically, yeah. It's very good. However, again, it's a fixed turret, and it's very slow uh, to position. And it's very vulnerable against infantry. It can't do any damage against infantry. Generally, tank destroyers won't be able to do damage against infantry at all. Like the SU-85, the, the, um, the Elephant, the Ag-Tiger, they're all not very good against infantry. So, but again, 
because it's immobile, it's not very very mobile. You can easily flank it around the sides and stuff. With even you know, even if you just try to even try to reverse it around, it's just too slow and too immobile. So with these units, these these I like I, I call these like sniper tanks. You want them at the back of your army, picking away at enemies because the, the, their vision, their range is really far. This elephant can just shoot up to here. See, that is massive range, and it outranges the Su-85. Okay. So, you always try and utilize that advantage. You do not want this unit in the front line, because if it's, if it's so close to the enemy, it makes it a lot easier to flank. So you want it at the back of your army, papping away. And also, you want to make sure that, you know, its flanks are protected. So if I had my elephant here, for instance, I would want a mine over here, a mine on my flank, you know, maybe a machine gun covering my angle, you know. I'd always want to be able to, you know, I, a lot of things I always tell people in Company Heroes so you need to try and always have a good supporting army, right? They always have units covering each other. Like, you know, your, your, your elephant complements your machine gun because that elephant is now stopping enemy armor from damaging your machine gun. Whereas your machine gun is complementing your, your, your elephant because that machine gun is suppressing enemy infantry that could move up and maybe snare the elephant or blow it up, for instance, kind of thing, okay? So you want to be trying to use your units in unison with one another, okay? Do mines count as a supporting army? Yeah, you can consider mines as that. You know, they are it's like an element of support that helps you. Right, let's see what else. So we talked about kiting um, tanks and stuff, mobile, you know, rear armor hit, if you hit enemies in the rear, they'll do a lot more damage. Also, thank you to Such His Life for the follow three minutes ago, dude. Thank you very much. Um, and you've got other, so you've got other bits. So like, like the King Tiger has 360 degree vision. Um, sorry, yeah, every vehicle has that. But uh, um, I mean, it's got 360 turret traversal. So but you can see how slow the turret traversal is. I told it to attack it attacked behind itself. And that was just really, really slow to do that, okay? So you don't want your Tiger tank doing this and shooting like that, because it's, it's odd. Now, you can, that was a manual attack ground. And then after a while, when I tell it to stop doing that, it will automatically turn its turret, turret back to face its front, I believe. Like so, okay? But let's say there was an enemy over here. I wanted to shoot them immediately, as fast as possible. I want to, If my turret is facing one way, I can speed up the turret traversal by making the tank point a certain angle, right? So let's say I wanted to shoot behind myself. Again, I would want to reverse around there and take it around. But anyway, I'm pressing R on my, on my hotkeys here to get this thing to reverse. I could also just right left, uh, yeah, sorry, right click behind me and it would also reverse as well. But if I was to do that um, over here for a long distance, it would want to turn around because that's the, you know, that's the most efficient way it would get there. It would get a lot quicker by turning around to do that. However, you always want to, like I say, if you're getting attacked from the front, you always want to be reversing backwards towards your base or your front, your, you know, to where you're safer, rather than doing this. Let's say, you know, like clicking this. The enemy base is over here, right? I wouldn't want to click this way back to get away from my enemy base. I'd want to make sure I'm turning my front arm around and then slowly reversing back, okay? Or, you know, and then I can just, I can always tell it to go again the left or to the right it's really easy to move i could do shift orders as well for instance i could say right i want you to go here and then once you get to there i want you to go there hang on a minute you go there there anyway there you go oh, it's also worth noting the big heavy tanks can crush things as well so i can crush like cover and stuff like light vehicles can't crush but uh medium and heavy vehicles so there's, there's medium crush which is the su-85s can get so su-85s can medium crush things like um these sandbags for instance but they're unable to crush this hedgerow over here right i would have to go around this side here as you can see i'll try and micro this way over here with this su-85 it won't, won't be able to do it but big heavy units like the, the king tiger the yagtig and the elephant the isu the pershing they can come over here and be like what the hell is this hedge get out of my way and they can just smash it so this is quite good because it can open open up a line of avenue for you to um, be able to push and flank enemy units. Stuff. Right. That you might not otherwise have been able to do in the past. Uh, let's just bring up some more tips here. Let's see what we got now. We can go into uh, listening through the fog of war. That's an interesting tip. So every vehicle in the game has specific engine noise, right? If you learn to distinguish that, you can hear, let me just turn the fog of war off. I'll make this an enemy tank actually. A second. So we all can hear the King Tiger's engine noise, right? If I made this an enemy tank.
We can't see it, but we can hear it, right? If I come over here, can't hear it. But we can hear it, hear the rumble. And also look at this. We can, I've told it to go over here, but we can tell where it's going because we can see through the, through the fog of war where it's crushing, right? So we know the king tiger was over here. So it's paying attention to those vital, vital clues and sounds. Now the king tiger is quite far over here. We can't hear it anymore, right? Because it's, it's, it's far away from our front line, our closest infantry squad, and it's not moving. But it's very important to listen out for those, those audio cues and also the visual clues of where enemy armor and stuff is by looking through where, you know, where terraform is, terraforming is happening, right? Right. Um, and also, like for instance, like a pan. Uh, let's get, again. I'll get an OKW Panther out as well, for instance, or just maybe just go tanks. Um, or steer tanks. Panther. So you can tell it's quite heavy. Let's get going, comrade. And look, now it's getting closer to my my combat engineer. Can't see it, but now we can see. Now we now, now we know it's there. But you get the idea. It makes a very distinctive noise. And, we, and uh, when it's when it's not moving anymore, it, it stops making that noise. But as soon as it starts moving, you know you, know, you can hear it. It makes a distinctive noise. Each tank has its own kind of engine noise. Oof. That's kind of like a more a depth. Kind of like tip for you guys it wants if you really like the game you know try and learn that but that kind of gives you it gives you you know if you if you know what's coming it gives you time to prepare for it right so let's say you hear a panther coming shit you've maybe overextended with a t-34 because the t-34 loses to a panther right so you want to reverse that t-34 straight away before you even see that panther because you know you're not going to win that fight okay right so that was listening through the fog of war um capturing sec sectors game awareness game awareness that's more of a advanced. We'll go through that next time. Um, right, we talk about smoke. So yeah, we, you know we talk about the, the, these guys. They can love smoke. Yes. <clears throat> let's just give an example of smoke here. Let's get some. Let's get an Austin machine gun here. Here we go. Right. H, that looks like a good spot for the MG. Start walking, comrades. Ready. Selection owner enemy. There's an enemy MG here. What you know it's there. So we're going to try and push against it here. Right, it's going to see us. We're going to lob the smoke down. So we lob the smoke down. So that breaks the line of sight of the MG and it can't see us anymore. So we can now get closer with the uh, with the shock squad. We now no longer get suppression. We can now probably sneak past him before he's got a chance to shoot us. And we can get in there and actually murder that machine gun using smoke. Right? Now... It's also worth noting that yes, we were in the line of arc of that machine gun, but because the machine, the machine gun, like when it it takes it takes a couple of seconds, about maybe one second for it to actually turn all the way around to the right or all the way around to the left, it doesn't it doesn't immediately snap to the right or left. So you can actually maybe flank an enemy machine gun even though you're in the firing arc if you're using the extreme of the firing arc and you've got maybe a distraction in the middle. Okay. What is it? We move. And then we could, for instance, let's say an enemy unit was about to try and kill us Moving. and we wanted to steal this machine gun, we could lob smoke on it. And we can queue up a shift command, we'll smoke, cover our retreat, grab the machine gun, and then press retreat on that. And we've stolen the machine gun as well, and that's good use of smoke, basically, okay? There are lots of other things we can use smoke. We can use uh, off-map commander abilities. Thank you, Dream Boy, for the follow. We can use um, smoke with um, a mortar team, like so. This is the 120mm mortar, and a normal mortar. Both of them can lob smoke. So we get these guys. So if, let's say we wanted to cap the middle VP and a machine gun was, was trying to stop us doing that. We would lob smoke down here. I know this is an Axis squad, but just imagine it was a Soviet squad. So we'd wait for the smoke to go. I'll, I'll do the barrage of smoke. Here we go. This is a smoke barrage. So once the first round has landed, so we now we push it now. And then also it's worth thinking that smoke also blocks our own line of sight. But we already knew a machine gun was there, right? So we don't really care about that. And then I could, for instance, build cover here, for instance, with a conscript squad. And then while I'm capping that, um, you know, that machine gun wouldn't be able to do anything because that smoke is providing me a nice little blanket of, uh, of time and cover so I can just get the neutralization on the point. And you could use this on anything. You could, you could use smoke to, um, for instance, an enemy big tank destroyer. You could use a smoke to blind the enemy tank destroyer so it can't see you pushing in with your, with your own tanks, for instance. So you can lose a lot of advantages with smoke. Um, so you got smoke with the mortar, you got smoke with the um, with the shock troopers, 
Uh, what else does smoke? I think that's it for the Soviets. But lots of things, you know, lots of things do smoke. Because different squads lob smoke. Commanders can lob a smoke bomb down once they get Vision C3 kind of thing. Um, but yeah, always try and use smoke to your advantage to gain, you know, to, to push an enemy position, for instance, or trying to cap a point, maybe try and steal a weapon kind of thing. That type of stuff. Right, let's move on to the next thing, which is... Um, Artillery. Go through artillery. Yeah, we can go through some artillery things. Right, so we go through artillery. Let's bring out our artillery unit. Ready. So for the Soviets, we have the artillery unit, the Katusha. Okay. Now the Katusha. Like with every artillery unit, you want it at the back of your base, basically. Every time every time you fire, you might want to bring it forward, but don't bring it on the front line, otherwise it's going to get one-shotted, because it, you know, it's very fragile. One pack round, like one Shrek round, you know, one tank round that hits this, it's dead, okay? It's a very, it's very, it's quite expensive unit as well, but it does a lot of damage to enemy infantry and support weapons, okay? Um, so what you want to do is you'd fire your Katusha rounds, and then you'd want to rev shift reverse it back to your base, and then once it's ready to load again, you bring it up and fire again. Okay. Now also notice this range is, is, is scatter. Okay. You can see the further away you fire. So you can see uh, if I press Z and you look at the mini map, you can see how far it can fire, right? The big yellow circle is where it can fire. It can't fire um, uh, too, too short a distance as well, right? Because so I can't fire really close to myself. I can fire quite far away, right? But you see the further away that I, I go with this and my max range, the spread is large, right? And the spread means that I'm less likely, my rockets are going to be spread out all over the place and less likely to do damage, right? I will want, as I bring that, that circumference or that circle closer to my Katusha, the tighter the circle gets and the more tighter the concentration of the rockets will be. But generally, you want to try and get up, get up as safe as possible, but generally as close as possible before you can lob this artillery strike down. So what I would do here, let's say I knew an enemy position was here, I'd want to bring my Katusha maybe around the back side of this house and use this sight blocker. And, 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 you know, and this house is a piece of cover, basically, right? So my enemy can't get an easy angle at the Katusha because it's hiding behind the house. And then I can lob the rockets down over here. Like so. And you can see those rockets are all kind of nice sent, uh, kind of nice tightly packed there, right? But if I was to fire a lot further away, let's fire in the base for instance. The rockets are going to be way more spread out. Generally speaking. So here you got a nice tight formation. Here is a bit a bit wider. Actually, that spread wasn't so bad. But sometimes, you know, but, but, but with um, company heroes, RNG is a factor. I Actually, this is something I, I probably should have spoken about earlier, but let's talk about RNG. So RNG is, um, you know, sometimes a tank will penetrate. Sometimes it rounds what it will not penetrate. Um, you know, sometimes a squad may, you know, a rifleman squad may be able to get the last hit and kill the enemy squad and retreat. Other times it might miss. Now, RNG is annoying and it can be a good thing as well. Like, it swings around about, but generally you can mitigate the effects of RNG, um, you know, on risk calculation, basically. Okay, so, for instance, we know these rockets, if I fire these rockets over here, the, the, the chance of my rockets being spread is greater than if I would have fired them closer here, basically. So that's being, I can mitigate RNG by moving my truck forward closer to get the shots in that I need. So with a, you know, and again, with like a tank, if I was to shoot the rear arm of an enemy tank, I, I am more likely to penetrate it than if I was to shoot the front of an enemy tank, right? Um, now you might have a tank destroyer and you might be chasing down an elephant that's one shot away from death and your tank destroyer might miss or bounce three times in a row. That has happened. It has happened to me. It's infuriating, but it can happen. But that was the risk that I took. I decided, right, I'm going to push in against it. I'm going to see if I can kill it with the S-85. You know, like, do I could, you know, before I take that risk, I could be like, okay, I could lose the S-85 in this engagement, even though it's unlikely, but can I afford to take that risk? Uh, and if I, you know, if I'm already ahead, you know, if it, you know, I can, I can replace it immediately. Maybe it's not such a bad, it might be worth trying to go for that trade and wipe it right, okay? and wipe it there but you know that's like an element of rng you don't know what you're gonna get sometimes but that's what makes it fun to play because never ne never any engagement might pan out the same you know you might have you might your mortar round for instance might land right on top of a retreating squad and wipe it you know 
Because, you know, you might tell a mortar to bombard here. Again, same thing with the mortars as well. You notice that it's a tighter circumference, bigger circumference there of the circle, the further away it is. Same thing with, like, with the Katusha. So, but yeah, like, you know, you might be able to turn it to bombard here, but not, maybe not all the rounds might actually land them. One might land off to the side, which might actually get you the wipe, or might not actually kill the unit that you wanted to kill. You just gotta, like, you know, deal with the fact that RNG will be a factor in Company Heroes 2, um, and uh, you just gotta tough it up, I'm afraid. And just try and, get, um, you know, mitigate any of those factors there. Right, let's go on to the next thing. Thank you, Monkey, for the follow. Cheers, dude. Right. Uh, Anking. He's a bit vague. Talk about my, oh yeah, let's talk about one of the other things. So I've got three top tips in Company Heroes 2, guys. So my first tip is probably don't lose squads, as we talked about before. You always want to try and keep your squads alive because, the, you know, it's a lot cheaper to reinforce a squad than build a new one. For starters, the second of all, the veterancy of the squad. Uh, the higher the veterancy the squad is, the more damage they do, the harder they are to kill, basically. Right? Okay. Where was I going with this? Hang on. Oh yeah, mines. Uh, and then the second tip was my, mines win games, okay? So I always recommend whatever whatever faction you're playing, you always want to be planting mines as often as possible because you, I always see new players floating a lot of munitions and not actually spending that. Now, a good idea to, to place mines is like, for instance, this little road around here, enemy comes around the side here and try, maybe, try and execute a flank on my cutoff. So I might want to put a mine down here, for instance, to stop that enemy from coming around that side. So you always want to be planting mines, as, you know, often as possible whenever you can generally you want to put them in in you know like spots like roads or on the opposite side of your cutoff so let's say because i wouldn't want to put a mine on this side of my base on, on this side of this point why because this is where i'm coming from the enemy is going to be coming from the south and pushing this way so i would want to put a mine here for instance right so if he tries to take my cutoff then he would not be able to uh, he'd hit that mine first and that would be an easier time to counteract and, and chase him off it's also <coughs> sorry it's also worth noting, uh, it's, talk it's talking about cutters actually, you can see each territory point connects to another territory point, right? And this one here um, connects my fuel, if I don't have my fuel, if, yeah, if I had my fuel point over here and lost that point, I wouldn't receive the resources because all your territory connects all the way back to your base, okay? But if you were disconnected, um, you know, on a cutoff point, you would lose certain resources even if you were, even if they were under your control, basically, okay? Now... Um, Let's get going, comrades. Once conscripts and combat engineers can gain veterancy one. They have the ability to apply a trip, trip flare for 10 munitions. Now this trip flare, if triggered by an enemy infantryman, will kill the, one of the models uh, and also pop a flare in the sky to give vision of that area, which is quite nice. It's quite, it's probably, actually trip for wire flares are more cost effective than mines because a mine... Uh, we'll always just kill two models of a squad unless more model there's two squads go over the same mine at the same time but generally if one squad always hits a mine it'll kill two men right and the mine is cost 25 missions whereas a trip trip wire flare costs 10 so obviously 20 missions you get two kills 25 you only get two so trip wire flares are generally more uh, um go. uh cost cost effective in terms of killing infantry now the mine also damages vehicles so let's just like make, make this mine an enemy mine for instance section owner That's an enemy mine now, right? So if I was to get a vehicle, for instance, let's make a T-70. Right, if I was to walk over this mine, I'd lose a bit, quite a chunk of health and also I'd get a damage engine. Now, indicated by this big symbol here. Now, a damage engine means that the vehicle is now very slow and it can easily get picked off maybe by a pack gun or something or like a, a you know, an enemy unit can chase it down and kill it. Now, to get this, to get, I can use an engineer to repair the tank back to full health. And once it gets back to full health, or close to full health, it'll lose its damage engine critical. So he'll be able to heal. But if I was to upgrade a sweeper, like so, a sweeper actually increases the repair speed of your of your engineers by, I think, 0.3. So it's better, you know, it's always a good idea. And I generally would always say to everybody playing Company Heroes, one second. Playing company heroes to always have at least one sweeper in your army because whenever you want to push a point 
or, t or take it, you know, move, a move to a new part of the map where you haven't been there recently, just always assume your opponent's blighted mines down. And if you manage to, well, I'll make this an enemy mine over here, for instance, selection, owner. Right. Well, I was to push forward with the sweeper first. The sweeper will spot the mine. we will get a little cube down here saying mine detected, like so over here. And then you can click on that and it will jump you straight to where the mine, you've spotted the mine and you can bring your sweeper over. You right click the mine, it would automatically do it themselves if you leave them there. But you want to right click the mine and they'll sweep that mine. And, um, you know, you won't get any munitions for that, but you'll remove the threat. Also, if you see an enemy mine that you know that has been planted in a certain area, you can use attack ground to blow it up. So let's just quickly get a... Um, Pull the mine here, for instance. Okay. I think even if it's a friendly mine, you can blow it up as well. If the 85 does not hit this bomb from the way. Not always that accurate. But generally, you know, if you see a mine, always using attack ground is a lot less accurate than if you saw the mine itself. But you can see, I can blow that mine up if I, if I knew it was there and I hadn't swept it, right? I can blow it up. So if I was to um, plant that mine there, get a sweeper over. Right, make that enemy mine. Selection, owner, enemy. So if I wanted, if I did, if I was too risky, let's say there was a machine gun covering this mine, I couldn't be able to sweep it. I could leave my engineers there and then get my tank or like a mortar or something to shoot it from range and like that, and I can blow the mine up straight away. You know, a lot more accurate because I can see the mine rather than using attack ground. So that's another way to get rid of a mine. Same, you can do that with any kind of mine. Uh, as long as you've got sweepers nearby, you can blow the mine up safely with engineers like so. Okay, so. Uh, and any any type of sweeper can sweep the, sweep these mines, telemines, shoe mines, you know, different types of things. So there's like two different types of access mines. You've got the normal um, bog standard shoe mine. Uh, you've got anti infantry minefields, and then you've got the telemine. The telemine is will only detonate when an enemy um, vehicle moves across it. <laughs> it won't detonate if infantry cross it. But if infantry, but if, it, but if an infantryman um, crosses the point. And you, blo and you try to manually detonate it by shooting at it, the enemy infantry on top of that point will probably um, die. Because it's a telemine. Telemine does a lot of damage. Okay. Um, and a telemine will generally... Any light vehicle, like a T-70, a telemine will one-shot them. Okay. Easily. Now, a normal mine against... Like a shoe mine will, uh, will, ge will generally... Not all the time, but generally one-shot a... a, a um, a, uh, an, an M3 like we have here and uh, yeah so well, that's about mines and explosives I mean you can also do demolition charges we'll talk about demolition charges the demolition charges are not often put in uh, place lately because they are easy to spot even units that don't have sweepers can spot them but um, a demolition charge can normally be it's quite nice to plant maybe on the retreat path an enemy squad or like on a building if an enemy came close to this they would see that demolition charge and they could um uh, <laughs> just attack move it and blow it and, and detonate it safely I can click this button here and it'll blow up whatever's nearby uh, it's very good against killing infantry that if infantry walk over you can blow them all up uh, does damage against vehicles as well I can put a demolition charge on a building so if an enemy squad try to get into a building one side I click the demolition charge the whole building will collapse generally so there you go right. next uh, bit of thingy majiggy Go over. I see. Let's ask chat. Any, any more kind of things that you you you've, you're scratching your head about and thinking, oh, I wish I learned more about that, or or I um, or, or I I'm struggling dealing with this. Could you talk? To, you ask me more. Any any questions you guys might have? Like, if there's something you think, oh, I haven't covered yet, let me know. I've got some more things I want to talk about at the moment. But I just want to give you guys a chance to uh, countering blobs. Here, no, just maybe when, when to build units. Please explain the Katusha special ability. So this Katusha special ability is a creeping barrage. I hardly use it because I mean the center barrage is is just as good. Um, Got to be Vetrancy one first of all. 
So creeping barrage is uh, V on the hotkeys. So basically, you can do multiple barrages, and it will it will it will slowly creep one way. So if I did it, so you can do you can choose the direction of it as well. So if I I left click down, and, I, and then I can drag it. So if I wanted it coming backwards and towards me, I could do it. Or if I wanted it going towards the enemy, I could do that. So I could do this. And it'll just slowly like come this way with those with those Katusha rockets. So it's like obviously it's, you know, it's creeping forward like that, you know. So this might be good to do like on a front line. So you want to start off like you know killing machine guns, and they might start retreating. And if they as soon as they start retreating, they're gonna they're gonna be running into that creeping barrage, right? Because they're gonna be retreating back through the Katusha rocket. So maybe maybe using a creeping cre creeping barrage would be good there. But generally, if you want to wipe a squad that's all but you know a blob or something's coming forward, you want to use the Katusha rockets. You can smash them. Okay. I was wondering why Vet Three Five Man Grens lose most of the time to Vet Three SVT Cons at max range. Aren't Grens supposed to win at long range? Oh, they should. I would imagine a Veteran C Three Five Man Grens squad would win against an SVT Vet uh, squad at range, but it depends on the cover and the situation. You know, maybe a couple of men might not have been in cover, that kind of thing. They don't. I, I'm pretty sure they don't. I mean, we, we can test it. So we'll get... Um, but the best way to test it is to put them... Right, the conscript's got here. Moving. Cover here. Moving to location. Protection is always welcome. Austin, infantry, friends, commander abilities, the five-man grand ability gone. Owner, oh, no. health. Guard squad ready. are on their way. We have Forward. been rewarded for bravery. Oh, this, is, this is like a Soviet ability from another command. We're dropping in a wet, uh, dropping right, a weapon here. Combat. Owner. Team. Wait, combat. Three. What do you guards? We move. You're up on our way. Okay. All right. So generally, I would assume the Grenadiers would win this engagement. Because grenadiers are more superior, but I don't think that squad's fully in green cover there. Actually, you can see like this one, the guy at the back. You know, the green cover is 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 symbol will be indicated when more than majority of the squad's actually in cover. But maybe one squad is not actually man in cover there. All right. Shame. Moving out. All right. We'll make this an enemy guy. Own an enemy. But yeah, this is like a this is like a long range engagement, kind of like with like kind of the max range of both these squads. Oh shit, more. There you go. Should be a seven. No, it shouldn't be a seven man squad because you can't make a seven man squad with with SVTs. But you can see here clearly this grenadier is winning. So I'm not sure what you're not sure what you're talking about when you know, but here we go, we can clearly test it. You can see this guy is wrecking this guy over here. Yeah. So that's another thing you guys want to know for new players is that certain units like the grenadiers will be generally superior at range compared to conscripts. But however, conscripts are more superior at close range. So if I got that conscript squad and put them closer to this grenadier squad, it'll be a lot closer fight. But you can see here this grenadier squad is Quite convincingly winning this engagement, okay? I'm heat. Anyway. Um, so basically that's that's that. Make it quick. Okay, so that's just like an example of range damage. Um you know, like shock, like bring in, for instance, shock troopers could be fighting against say, a Gren squad there. Now, shocks would wreck at close range, but, um, you know, well, I don't think we need to do that. Right, um, what else would you guys say I should do? You said I should go over. 
Countering blobs. Okay, so yeah, let's counter blobs. Because that's a big thing to go over, I think. So, in, for, especially for new players. Because new players, Jin, to just grab their whole army because they're not very good at microing individual units. They grab their whole army and just A move it. Right click it. They try and grab, you know, they make a load of dudes and try and A move it, okay? Right. Now, the way to deal with blobs is through machine guns and indirect fire. And explosives, basically. So, if you had a big blob coming in, let's say you're up against, I don't know, some guy. He was thought he was hot shit, and he was like, "Yo, I'm a spamming stamp pioneers." You know, he's rushing at you. You know, he's trying to rush your position over here, right? Yeah. So yeah, he's coming in, trying to take out your your VP selection owner enemy. Then so we saw the blob. You know, we we got the house here. We can see him coming in, and I would get ready with my Katusha rockets. Fire here, and you can see. That the Katusha rockets absolutely smash that those that, that squad, those lot, the majority of those squads there, right? Now, obviously, I wouldn't have the Katusha on its own there. I'd probably have a machine gun in that house as well. So if I had a machine gun in the house, that machine gun would have suppressed the squads, so the squads would not be able to move fast. They would stay in the same spot, and therefore the Katusha would be able to do more damage. Generally, you'd want the squads to be suppressed before you start firing the Katusha barrage, because if they're suppressed, then you'll be able to um, obviously get more accurate shots on them because they're not moving. Uh, but yeah, that's generally the thing. And then, right, I'll just try and demonstrate again. Selection, owner, me. Alright, so I'll get, for instance, this, okay, this time we'll do Maxim in the house. Turn that building into a machine gun nest. You know? So I've got my, my MG in the building. So actually, one of the also things to note with mach machine guns in buildings have actually a greater arc of fire. Especially if it's like a Maxim crew. So you can see this MMG is in the building. We can see a bit further now. Um, so we'll try and replicate that blob coming in again. So we've got blob coming in of Sturms. Okay. Again, we'll make sure my Katusha rocket is kind of close to the front line. MG's going to fire on the blob. They're going to fire. And because the squads are all close together, they, they take more damage. And then I'm going to make sure my, I'm going to get my machine gun to shoot the uh, the squad that didn't receive maybe that much suppression to keep make sure they're suppressed. Keep rotating back on the machine gun. To, I can manually get the machine gun to focus fire on different squads. You can see, like with with one machine gun on its own, easy to take out a blob like that. However, if the, the one thing you want to know that goes though, guys, is that your support weapon, machine gun. Would, have, would need to be behind green cover. A lot of people don't realize this, that they could just have one machine gun and it could take on, a, on like a big blob. If that was a full Shimiga squad, for instance, let me just take another example, have this machine gun out like this, in no cover over here, and we had a full Shimiga blob come towards it. But three full Shimigas. Then... You might, what you might have happen is the cycle death animation, right? So, I need to destroy Panzer Headquarters quickly. Um, okay, so this is like the blob of death, right? You, this is this is dangerous, right? If I saw this coming, I would immediately retreat my MG because I know what would happen. My, you know, the the, the, the force makers would always keep shooting the main model of that of that MG and just keep wiping it, right? So what, you what you want to do against a, a, like a dangerous blob like this would be having the machine gun definitely in the house or behind green cover so it can take that initial first uh, fire. So if I was to you know bring the, these squads forward and then aim moving this way, select owner enemy. See? And... And managed to get one suppression bit off, but instantly taken out, right? The machine gun dies so quickly to that kind of blob of death. Why are they, Why is this squad not capping that, anyway? But you can see what I'm talking about, right? So, but if that machine gun was behind green cover, which will now replicate, again, if I can do that. Pretend they are bags of gold, comrades. HMG is relocating. On the move. Okay. Departing. 
like so. And then we got... We replicated that fight. Now behind the cover. Yes, comrade. See how much you're eating. Now, now these squads are suppressed. They're going to be not very, very good. However, what you want to also watch out for is that if the squad gets too close, they can still lob their bundle grenade in as well. So you might want to still pack up and avoid getting shot here. But if the squad get, does get pinned before that, then uh, they won't be able to lob the grenade. Okay. But you can see, because we had that cover there, we didn't even lose a single man on the machine gun, right? Yes, we did have the conscript squad extra there, but it wouldn't have made much difference. I just... So, yeah. But you, get what, you, you get what I mean, right? You, cover is important to be able to deal with, like, you know, these OP blobs. You need to make sure you've got the cover there. If you haven't got the cover there, you're going to be losing your squads. And if you see that blob coming and you haven't got cover, just retreat. What is this quang? It's basically we're doing um, tutorial uh, boot camp today. If any of you guys got any questions, because I know a lot of people are new to the company here as a community, as you've recently picked up the game this, this past weekend, I'm just going over doing a boot camp. Again, thanks to Redic for sponsoring me to do this. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going through this campaign, or going through the um, basic mechanics of the game. Uh, we can talk about build orders. I think I'll go, that'll be on the one of the next streams, because build orders, I want to go through build orders on Soviets and Austin, but we'll go through them specifics, um, you know, as we as we get through those factions, right? So if different infantry has different engagement ranges, right? Yes, so you've got some different, inf so different infantry like, um, for instance, um, Panzer Fusiliers, like these lads, here. These lads um, will have greater range in being able to shoot people before an enemy actually can see. Uh, um, well, they can see them, but they can't re return fire. So they'll be able to, you know, you can you, you can utilize your range advantage there to maybe kite way. an enemy potentially. I missed the blob countering problem. So basically, Company Heroes, a lot of new people uh, come into Company Heroes and just because they don't know how to micro units individually, they just spam a load of conscripts, for instance, and then just A-move them and blob them forward. Now, if you've got a big blob like this, all you need, like I say, is one machine gun to suppress the whole lot, and, um... Hold here, and then you can just kill them. Like so. And you forgot to put a affiliate link on that uh, do banner. I put it on the bottom, dude. But yeah, counters in general is literally just, like, machine guns, like Maxims, um, you know, katushas, mortars, anything they can just keep those, those squads there and suppress. Even a tank. Like one tank, you know, you can just kite with tanks, for instance. You've got a blob coming towards you, you just have a, a couple of T-34s or maybe a T-70 just constantly just picking away at the blob. Just keep reversing back. The blob's not going to be able to do anything to you if you keep reversing back. Like I said, with, again, with the kiting that we talked about earlier. And you can just keep picking away at people, okay? Let's talk about wiring. Yes, we talked about wiring and, and, and denying cover and that kind of thing. I mean, what counters what? Well, in... Company Heroes is a game of soft counters. A lot of units in Company Heroes 2 have the ability to, um, you know, in conjunction with other units, defeat stronger units than themselves. For instance, a T-70 generally wrecks every infantry unit it come up, comes up against, but a Panzer Grenadier squad with Shreks could take down the, the T-70 if, uh, you know, within two volleys, basically. Uh, if, he, you know, if the T-70 is stupid enough to stay in the engagement long enough, right? So that's like a soft counter. Or, or if, if the, the T-70 gets Panzerfausted and a pack gun shoots it and finishes it off, for instance, that's that's kind of a soft counter, right? Right? Okay, so let's go... Um, what should we go through next? We've got, we've got 26 minutes left. I think we'll go through... Powering SimCity is a bit more specific. Let's go with... Do, do, do. Garrison. Yeah, I think we went through garrison, mines and explosives, vehicles in late game. Talk about general, I mean, flanking. Well, I can talk, talk quickly about flanking. So as, as we talked about before, you know, we had the support weapons like the Maxims and the machine guns, right? They all have their kind of firing arcs. Right? Like these guys. That looks like a good spot so to end. flank an in position, Crew, what you'd want to do... You see, you know, if you wanted to flank an enemy, you saw this enemy machine gun. Thank you, Defoe. Thank you for the follow. So you see this enemy machine gun, you can see it's firing up. So that would mean you'd know, you know, you'd see it, you'd click on the MG to then realize where it's firing up. And then you go, all right, I can then go around this this flank here to try and deal damage to that machine gun so it can't shoot me, right? 
but you can flank around the side here or around here basically you know you uh, and the same thing with this gun you know this gun you know shoots that can shoot from that angle so you can you can flank around flank around the sides basically it's, it's pretty straightforward you, know, you just click on the enemy support weapon and you can see where the flank is vulnerable. Again, cover is directional, so if you were to enemy units on this point cover, you want to flank around the side here, flank around there. You always want to be attacking from multiple angles as well. TMC the dude, thank you for the follow. So you don't want to ever just be doing one flank, right? So let's just say I came over this, 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 this Panzer Fusion squad and pushed this side. He would just pick up and turn this machine gun this way, right? But if once he starts turning the machine gun to face this way, then I would then push him with my other squad around this side. So then you get double flank going on, right? And then, you know, this squad is now behind cover, so this machine gun might be able to suppress the squad that quickly. And this squad won't take much damage because it's in cover. Um, and then that buying the other squad enough time to get around there and flank, flank that position, basically. Okay? It's pretty straightforward. Just, honestly, attack the enemy position where they're not looking. Just generally most of the time. Okay? Right, you know, and talk about the long, you know, the long term of things. A lot of times in Company Heroes, you know, people, you know, on this map, you know, they'll have a lot, a lot of their forces focused down, pointing this way to the south side, because this is where you're put your base, you, you, let's say your axe, your base is down here. You'd want to try and come around this side, around this right, right flank, but you want to bring a sweeper before coming around to make sure to check for mines, and then you want to push in and get the flank off. And then as soon as he noticed you coming from the north, also always have prepared some extra units down here to then push through the middle, because, you know, then you double, double, double whammy him, basically. You have a double hints of movement you know you always want to try and flank um <coughs> from two angles at once you can you can you can get you know for, for, for newer players you probably can get away with just a single flank but for more experienced players um and if you or if people who want to go for the most success you want to try and attack from multiple angles as possible you know and the higher up in the skill level with cover here so you get you'll have people doing three or four flanks at once um, you know, from multiple angles. So, like, if you're playing, for instance, Loveness, Nagano, you'd imagine, like, T-34 coming in the middle, coming around the side, coming around the, around this side, another one coming in this side. And you've got, like, a four-pronged assault. Very hard to deal with. You've got a micro a lot at the same time, basically, right? You know, it's just a, just a case of, like, you know, trying to deal with that. And now, if you're trying to defend against flanks, again, like I say, mines on your flank routes is good. Maybe having a unit at the back, just in case something was to flank around and deal with you. Um... I think a good good way of dealing, you know, practice against flanks, guys, is probably playing against the expert computer. Because the expert comp computer will always try and attack you from the side that you don't have units. Um, so that get, gets you used to trying to cover your flank routes, that kind of thing. Okay? Trying to read through some chat to see what I missed. Um, I'm actually not a new player. I've had a few problems with the same micro level of the hard bot. Honestly, the bots are really, like, once you realise how the bot plays, it's really predictable. Like, an expert, I mean, do you guys want to see me play against an expert computer quickly? For the last 20 minutes and just see how, see, see what I do? I'll, yeah, let's do that. Let's do a quick little run through and I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys an example of, um, you know, for, for the new, newer people here, of, of what, what you should be expecting against a, um, an, an expert computer. So what we'll do, so we'll just give you guys a basic example of what I, why I'm doing things as I'm doing them. I'll just basically repeat what I was doing just a moment ago. And we'll go through, uh, like, so the next couple of streams tomorrow, we'll probably go through um, Soviet build orders, how to play Soviets effectively, all the, all the kind of build orders there. Give you guys an idea of what they, they're capable of. Right, here we go. So we're now going to play against the AI again. Um, you need something demolished. I don't want to build my tier one in this location. So I can't, so I don't think a light vehicle, I think a Panzer II might not be able to fit through there. So if, if, if like, for instance, you always want to try to deny your opponent being able to rush your base, for instance, if you can. Comrade Tomato, thank you very much for the follow. So this is a tier one build that I'm doing. So normally this is quite a common, a common build that people have been doing in 1v1s in the tournament that we recently had. Um, which is called like the double engineer opening into... Like a penal and then an M3. You need something. Put up some barbed wire to keep the enemy at bay. Engineers standing. Engineers on the way. We okay, have just make sure I'm capping. My, my squad's capping. Right, we'll get there. Getting ready. I'm ready to move Stop over to the next point. Securing the objective. We have it. Come, engineers. We have an area to secure. Let's get going, comrades. Squad. Pressing W Let's to go. stop them as soon as they're ready to move this over the line. The there we go. Okay, come over there, grab that. There comes my first squad, rallied again to the front line. Making sure whenever I'm trying with my squad, I'm trying to make sure they're capping in cover. But my opponent's capping the middle point now. 
with something. I'm going to get involved there. Might be a machine gun, so be careful. Don't want to get suppressed. We're pushing here. It's just a, just a pioneer squad. So we're going to engage this squad at range because we are, you know, those MP40s are really bad at close range. So we can just pap away at the squad from range like this. We also don't want to get baited into a machine gun that might be lying over here. But since it's the AI, it probably doesn't have a machine gun yet. Okay, we're going to get rushed by pioneers over there. Since he made pioneers second, it's very unlikely he's got machine gun. So I'm thinking using my game awareness there because you must build pioneers. You know, if you build a pioneer squad first, it's not going to have anything else. We're going to make sure this squad comes in and grab that. Get another penal squad out before we get M3. Using cover as our advantage, green cover. Easily wrecking that squad there. Jumping out immediately with shift. So if you press shift, guys, on a building, you can get out a different side of the building that you might want to get out of. I'm going to give you an example in a second. I'm going to grab you and then Captain Nick go into the house over here. Give us some vision on that side. Three pioneers over here. Okay, bring these guys over here. Secure that wire off this cover. Get the M3 out now. Okay, always wiring off my opponent's cover. You never want to be capping with more than one squad if you can help it. There's only one, you only need one squad at a time to cap a point. And also, don't do what the AI has done here and build a cache at the start of the game. That's not a good idea. I'm going to jump in this house because he's moving infantry this way, so I want to get vision over this side quickly. Got flamethrower over there now. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. Dump this squad out here and try and get rid of this flamethrower squad. So this flamethrower squad will do quite good damage close range. So I'm just going to pop away from range. Getting this guy upgraded to a flamethrower so I can actually damage him. Up this squad back a bit. Need to spread this squad out a bit as well. He's got penals there. Box there. So he's going to get in this house. So I need to back away and avoid him if we get too close. Right, I'm going to bring, come over here and get this squad to assist against this this this, uh, this, this Panzer Grenadier squad is very good at close range, so I need to try and kite it. And we've got flames there as well to assist. I've just got numbers here going in my advantage. And now I'm going to try and chase this squad and retreat. Try and get the wipe on it if I can. So I'm gonna get suppressed here. I'm gonna jump into this, jump into the um, into the thing so I don't die. I might lose this. There we go. No, I'm good. So pull back, jump the squad out by healing at my base. Heal the M3 with the infantry. I don't know if he's got a vehicle. He's already got a vehicle. That's actually dangerous. Just pull back. Let's put a mine down quickly. Get one more penal out, then we'll tech up. Normally, so this is a decent build. So you go three penals, M3. Sounds like he's got a 2 to 2 over there, he does. So 2 to 2 I haven't got any way to counter that 2 to 2 at the moment. So I'm going to upgrade this penal here. Actually, no, we'll do it with the healthy one. We're bringing a brand new two penal. So we're going to make that penal up with the PTRS upgrade so it can combat the uh, the M3. Or the, the 2 to 2. He's trying to build a bunker here. We'll try and take that out in a second. How do I make my guys spread out? You just click on the squad and you drag them. So you click them and you just drag them like that to get them out, of, to make them spread out a bit. So they're not in cover. Right, there we go. Also, don't don't try and if, guys. If you build in, uh, while while um or repair while in combat, you take way more damage. We've built that. Up. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna use a statue charge here. Actually, let's come around here and we'll blow a statue charge up. We've got a uh, thing here. Right, what I'm gonna do is get these guys into this M3. Come around here, blow this, um, this bunker up. With a Satchel Charles. So Satchel Charles can one-shot these bunkers. So that's what I'm gonna do quickly. There you go, pull back quickly so we don't get suppressed. Probably will get suppressed. Let's get you guys in here. There you go, destroyed that bunker. It's taken care of, healing our boys. We're gonna build tier three now, so we can get a T-70 out. And now we put the penals with the PTRS rifles inside the M3, they can start damaging this, this half-track, okay? And we're trying to use this cover against this, this uh, machine gun here. We're using the well. There we go, taking that care of that. 
Let's go to Kevlar. 2 to 2 will do quite a lot of damage to our M3 here. So I'm going to jump these guys out. Bring the M3 back. Heal these guys up. Give these guys the middle VP. Versus back. Keep using the penal to damage that. Going for his cutoff now to deny his resources. He's loving a grenade there, watching his animations so I easy dodge it. Got pack over there, let's go rush that. Got T70 now. Pick this guy's back, come over here, get you to repair that, bring you back there. Push these guys forward. Gonna love a satchel charge here so I can destroy the cache and maybe the, the, uh, the pack crew as well. Like so. Repair this M3, heal my troops back at base. Notice that my opponent is cap is capturing my fuel point on the right. I would like to try and steal this M this uh this pack gun in a second, and I will do. I'll do it now then. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna try and steal it. We'll pull it back. Right, I'm gonna try and get the cap first before I pull it back. Pull them back, there we go. Come over there. He's out, let's bring it down here now to engage some machine gun. MG gun's gonna suppress me quickly and turn to the, my guys around the right hand side of the cover so they don't get suppressed. Here comes the um who's there. Take those guys down there. Let's repair that in that unit there. Fill my boys up, put you guys there. Start, and then same thing again, grab the machine gun, shift click. So I'll steal that that um that uh that machine gun off him. Use the MG to grab the VP. Notice my opponent is using a recon flight, which gives me an idea of maybe it was commander choice. I'm gonna repair, I said gonna repair the actual weapon of that that thing. I'm actually gonna pull it back to base and heal it. Um so here comes the, the Panzer Grenadiers with Shrek, so now that's a dangerous unit, so I need to back, back away from them. I'm going to get you to come over here, this M3 to come over here. Pull you guys back to base, heal you. I'm going to use the um, Engineers here to repair that T-70. Got another, right, bring those uh, penals with the AT rifles down here to deal with the threat of the 222. Meanwhile, come over to the left-hand side, use this M3 to harass this engineer, which can't counter me. I could use a sticky satchel here to kill this, um, to kill this, uh, Two to two, but I'll be wasting this just because I can easily kill it just with the uh, the, the sweeper, so with the with the PCRS rifles. We Treat those guys back kill, repair this, bring these guys back into the front, fight. See the Shreks are over there, so I can engage, keep my M3 over into this over here, so I'm gonna worry about getting shot by the Shreks. Use my machine gonna capture the fuel point on the right. Watch out for the grenade. Pull back, dodge, back into the fight again. Kill this. Come over here. Get through to engage and aggress. I'm going to engage this uh, shot down here. Got the nade. Okay, that's good. For you, for you. Go for the cutoff. I might. No. So watch out for this Shrek here. Can I get around here? I might be able to go around here and be super cheeky. I'm going to build a satchel charge here and blow up the defense, these two bunkers here with this with this demo charge. Like so, pull these guys back. Demo charge them both, retreat the squad. Bring my squad down. Now I've destroyed the base defenses over here, so now I can come over here and, and, and aggress with my infantry. I'm bringing my machine, I'm bringing my retreat machine gun back because there's only three men. I've got a lot of resources now. I've got 600 manpower in the back, so I'm probably going to maybe call on some elite infantry. Let's get some guards out. Upgrade those guards immediately because I've got the munitions to do that. Have the pack on prioritize the vehicles. Right, let's push in here. We know he's got Shreks, so we've got to be careful. So I want to make sure I can bait out. I'm going to try and bait out the Shreks. Because you can't prioritize Shreks on infantry, for so, uh, on tanks for some reason. So I'm going to try and bait the, out those Shreks onto the, um, onto the penals first. And then we're going to get the T-70 in there to do the damage. Right, you guys come back. 
Right, there the Shrek's over there. Right, I'm going to come into his base now and just lob static charge to try and blow. Actually, I'm, I should use my munitions up, so that's not good. Actually, we'll get back at base and build tier 4 so we can get another vehicle out. So we, we, we saw, oh, he has got a pack gun. Back pedal here a bit. Bring you back around here. This guard's out in the front. Thank you for gifting the sub. Right, we need to try and get these this T seventy doing work here. But I'm a little bit scared of those Shrek. Let's get off. Right, we've got a squad of retreating past here, so I'm going to use I'm going to lob a satchel charge here on the retreat path of this squad, so we can wipe it. Like so. The easy way to try and ensure a wipe if you, if you can calculate the retreat paths of certain units. Check the Shreks. The pack. We can use a tag round here to shoot the pack round from an angle he can't see us from. We took wipe the pack gun, which is good. We're gonna build a T-34 on the base as soon as we can. Let's so retreat these guys. Pull you back, kill you. Get machine gun on his cutoff. There's an MG over there. Let's bring the T-70 this way. Eating that pack gun in the base. Reversing back round here with the T-70. We'll try and chase it on his retreat path here. We've got a... Okay, that's not a threat. Right, we've got uh, more Panzer Grenadiers over here. But watch out for the Shrek. Shreks are coming this way, so we've got to be really careful here. Don't want it. One more body of those Shreks and I'll lose the squad. Lose the, uh, lose the MG. I'm not gonna, I don't need to take a risk here because you know I'm already really at far ahead of my opponent, so I don't need to push in and try and wipe that pack gun. But the AI, see how annoying the AI is? He just keeps capping around the fringes all the time, right? Might park my MG in that house there, so I can. Because I, I know I've got enemies in my north, so if I put my MG in that house there, I can cover my, I can cover my uh, my rear. Goes over there. Go to the Shreks. Get the penals to focus that, that M3, uh, so the, the half track down. Pull the guys back, retreat them. Get a mine on, the, on my on this side of the point here. Because that's where the enemy might be trying to push for to capture that point. Get my T70 ready to anticipate the retreat path of this squad. So, try and chase it back if we can. There we go, got the white there. Pack gun is in position, gotta watch out for this. Over there. He goes forward, T-34 out. Harass the harass his base entrance. Okay. I'm using my T-34 here to try and crush this infantry by, by, by messing with their pathing. Quite difficult to do, but... And also there's the pack gun. I'm clicking on the pack gun to see its line of arc so I can get a good flank on it. But we've got Shrek boys here as well, so I'm going to try and crush these boys here. Oh, I might lose my T-34 here to these Shreks if I'm not careful. They are suppressed, so they might not be able to get the next, next shot. Retreat those guys. Pull them back. Right. So I'm going to use my advanced repairs. Bring you guys forwards. Repair you. Coming with you. Bring this pack gun over here where it's. I don't want to leave my pack gun on it. So a lot of people forget the pack guns, you know, in anti tank guns, you have to reverse them back. So you can't retreat these units. So you always want to try and keep them with your units and pull them back when, you're, when you retreat the rest of your army. Okay, let's just keep making T-34s and just finish this, guy, this, uh, this AI off as quickly as possible. Okay. Again, trying to, you want to try and get your Panzer Grenadiers at max range if possible because they are the units that um, will do good damage at close range and guards have got the DPs which are good at long range. Machine gun to turn around and flank that squad quickly. Right, so this him flank this. See, he's going to get into this house here, or he's going to get clumped up. And if the squads are clumped up, they're going to take more damage from them. We'll have a grenade onto that Panzer grenade squad. I'll retreat that squad back. AI actually dodged a grenade. 
I want to restrict that squad because that squad is a, a basically that squad's basically a full health in terms of men. So I can, it's a, but it's only like a 55% health. If I retreat that, I can kill them all up without losing any men, which is very good. I'm gonna pop a satchel on there to blow that up. Prioritize vehicles here so I can chase down this this this, um, this vehicle. And I'm gonna flank this um, center tank gun here. I'm gonna keep reversing around it like so. So we can't get an easy line of shot sight on me. Keep pushing, micro two tanks at once. Okay, destroy that. Actually, no, let's not destroy it, we can steal it. I'm gonna steal that so I can use it to blow his base up so we can win this game faster. So we've got that, alright, we can now base rush him and finish him off now. Built tier three. I can also blow blow a hole in this here, this hole here. Press all to change the camera, by the way, so I can get an easier line. So rather satchel charges, so I can blow the wall up here and actually have another way into my units. I can vault this wall now and come in from that angle. Like so. Bring this pack gun in as well to assist. Move my machine gun up as well. Bring all my units in unison to help each other out. Oh, we have a tank here. So I'm going to pop on mark target. Which gives me more penetration. And I've got my pack gun in good support there so we can smash this thing. And I'm trying to get the rear armor shot. I don't even need to. The pack gun's going to finish it off with one more shot. And it's down. But it's been a good idea to pop the Mark vehicle on there so I can quickly get the wipe on it. Meanwhile, the rest of the enemy infantry is getting wrecked over here. Always make sure I try and chase the squad retreat. There you go, nice. There you go. Get that MG up to there. Suppress that squad there. So this is one of the ways you can win, but just, just through annihilation, right? It's just destroy the base. You can see I'm crushing this squad because I'm messing with their pathing. They can't get out of that angle there. There we go. And that's game. So now we've destroyed his base, I get the victory. So very straightforward, and uh, there you go. Hey guys, thank you for watching that video. If you want more content, please click on the link over here and over here. If you would like to subscribe, click on the button down here. Also click on the notification bell down there so you're notified whenever I post new YouTube content. I also stream nearly every single day on Twitch. Uh, I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash helping hands. Uh, and if you want to show your support there, please do subscribe uh, as all your support helps me do this full time. And uh, yeah, guys, I appreciate it as always and catch you next time. Bye-bye.